Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good uh, evening to everyone. So um, uh, let's be with me uh, with my journey of my sabbatical leave uh, research project. So uh, first of all, I'm sharing you uh, my slide. Uh, okay, um, again, I am very um, happy and very excited uh, to be with all of you. Uh, wait, I... Okay, uh, to be with all of my colleagues, friends, and also might be students will be joined uh, in my sharing session um, where... Um, uh, I will be presenting uh, my sabbatical research project entitled Bats Diversity and Roost Site Selection in University Putra, Malaysia. <laughs> so as mentioned by uh, Dotani, um, uh, my sabbatical uh, Leave actually have been done in two places. Uh, in Isaac W. Um, wait. Uh, okay. Uh, wait. Uh, I got. I'm not sure. Um, the, the, is it okay? Can you see? Can you see my? Slide? Yes, yes. Dr. Marina. Doctor, yeah. ada nak macam mana hitam dekat screen? Mana hitam? Ada kat mana? Kat atas oh, dan on screen. your right. Ah, uh -huh. Kalau uh -huh. macam uh, drag ke atas. Yang tu okay. macam minimize terus. Yang sebelah kanan tu. Yang kotak sebelah kanan tu doktor minimize terus. Kalau oh, boleh. this one? This uh -huh. one? Uh -huh. Oh, oh, boleh nampak. Eh? Oh, okay. Dia kacau screen. <laughs> okay, doctor. Oh, okay, okay. Alright. Wait, I am. I, I think that I minimize. Uh, I minimize everything. Okay, is it okay right right now? Ah, uh, better, doctor. Better. Better. Ah. Eh? Uh. Hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, I continue. <laughs> All right. Um. My sabbatical leave actually uh, been carried out in two places, which uh, in Lebanese Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research. Um, before that, can can everyone mute? Um, Shazham, can you mute your speaker? Uh, okay. Um, uh, Isaac W situated in Berlin, Germany, and I managed to. Uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, can can someone ask uh, everyone to mute the the sound, the microphone? Oops. Okay, thank you so much. I continue. Um, as I mentioned that Isaac W is in Berlin, Germany. And that time um, I managed to do my, uh, did my sabbatical uh, around two weeks from, uh, from 2nd March until 16 March. And then due to uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, so my sabbatical uh, leave have to change to uh, University Putra Malaysia Sedang Campus Selangor uh, for the whole period uh, starting from 17 of March until uh, 30, uh, 30 November 2020. So uh, during that time, Alhamdulillah, uh, almost one month uh, being in Berlin, uh, I have um, 
the chance to visit some of the places there, uh, visit the Berlin Wall and also the Fern uh, Saturn Berlin. This is actually the TV tower, uh, one of the attractive place uh, in Berlin. And I am also um, with my, this is my supervisor, PD Dr. Christian Voigt, eh? together with uh, his staff, Michael Matthew, uh, we go to the Asian market to search some uh, halal food. And um, for your information, uh, PD Dr. Christian Voigt is actually the head of the department, uh, Department of Evolutionary Ecology in Isaac W. So this is my workplace in Isaac W. Uh, this is um, my office mate, Dominic. Dominic is actually a student uh, which volunteering in the Isaac W programs. And then this is Dr. Christine. The, um, she also doing the BATS project uh, that, re that uh, related in um, BATS in Berlin. Okay, and then um, I am also um, have a 10 1 training. That is the telemetry training at Tier Park that conducted by Dr. Christine. Uh, this is her uh, master's students, Anna Paul and Lawrence Julia. And in the training, um, we learn about uh, using the equipment such as the transmitter, receivers, and antenna to detect uh, bats that being uh, equipped with the transmitter. So this is the picture showing me uh, holding the transmitter. And then we try uh, to detect bats from one side to another side. Okay. And yes, this is the story of my uh, sabbatical research project, which um, uh, happens in University Putra Malaysia Serdang campus entitled Bats Diversity and Root Site Selection in University Pusra Malaysia Serdang Campus. So this is uh, the research team. I am very happy to introduce you. Uh, this is my supervisor in Isaac W. Berlin, Germany, Dr. Christian Voigt, my friend, uh, Dr. Juliana Senawi from UKM. Uh, these are my students, FYP students, uh, Ahmad Badur Amin and Nur Farazwin and also my master student, Shakira, and the one uh, that always helping me, uh, this research assistant, the Muhammad Nasri. Uh, Nasri is actually the uh, high rope technician. Eh? So all activities that related to high rope uh, will um, conducting by uh, conducted by uh, Mr. Muhammad Nasri. Okay, and then, uh, all right, this, uh, I would like to give you a general view of bats. Eh? Uh, sometimes when we say about bats, um, some of us mm, think that bats um, uh, give bad luck. Okay? Uh, some, someone also think that bats related to Dracula uh, because we always uh, uh, see movie might be movie that related Dracula and related to bats eh? uh, but actually uh, for today please open your mind and I hope that um, everyone of us after this can get the uh, correct information about bats and then after that we can increase our awareness also about uh, bats what is bats um, and then uh, what bats eat, eh? what the function or benefit of the bats to our ecosystem and etc. Uh, information that related to bats. So for your information, bats is actually a mammals, eh? a mammals, uh, which classify under the order of Chiroptera. Okay, Chiroptera means a uh, wing hand. So you can see here that bats, have a very special uh, wing membrane. That's why. That's why. Uh, 
uh, they are categorized that the truly uh, flying mammals, the truly that the mammals that can truly fly. So um, this is com if you compare with a kind of uh, animals, uh, kalugo or um, flying squirrel can. So bats is not same as them. Bats they can uh, fly like a bird, okay, but they do not have feathers. Uh, but that kalugo or flying um, squirrels, they only capable uh, to glide from one to another side. Eh? So um, bats is actually divided into two groups, which call the Yiptero Chiroptera and Yango Chiroptera. So what is Yango Chiroptera? Uh, sorry, Yiptero Chiroptera. Uh, it is actually comes from what's Theropodide. Means the mega bats, eh? mega bats, mega bats referring to a uh, quite large size of bats. Uh, quite quite large bats in size, and you can see uh, it have a quite big eyes like this and a handsome face like dog or fox. Eh? Compared to uh, the micro bat. That is under the Yango Chiroptera or Vespertilio uh, uniformus, uh, which this includes the microbats or we call the insectivorous bats. So, insectivorous bats, so insectivorous bats are bats eating insects, smaller size uh, compared to uh, frugivorous bats. Eh? So, this is the picture of Myotis muricula. Or are uh, uh, commonly known as banana bats. Eh? So later we explain more about myotis miracula. Okay, now the best part. So uh, friends, eh, uh, sometimes we did not know uh, the role that play by this uh, very important creature in our ecosystem. Yeah. So today I would like. To give you some information of the info important roles of bats in our ecosystem. So, first of all, they regulate the insect population, especially the bat insects. So, they eat a lot of insects at night, in one night, uh, almost 10,000 over uh, insects eh, in one night. And then I have prepared you one video that might be interesting uh, to see. So let's let's watch the video. Yes, okay, thank you so much. So this is the view during the uh, termite swarmer season. Kelkatu, tau kan? Kelkatu kan? So during this time, you can see the bats all over, flying all over the places. I replay. So I call it feeding, uh, feeding frenzy. Because there's so many bats that you can see fly over you. And this is such a nice view to see. Eh? This is in UPM. Uh, nearby the Serupun area. Because there are so many roosting trees here. Inhibited by the bats. Eh? Okay, thank you so much. Um, I cancel it first. Then back. To, okay, back to my presentation. Um, okay. All right. The second important roles of bats, they are a pollinators. Eh? They are agents of um, durian, durian trees and also like the petai. So those who are the durian lovers, eh? this is the pollinator. So you, ha you, you have to know that Bats playing the vital roles uh, to pollinate the durian flowers. So bear in your mind that um, no bats, no durian. Okay. And then bats also as a seed dispersal agent. Um, in it's tropical, yeah. Ah, uh, slide. Is it? Uh, okay, wait. Masih <laughs> lagi dekat YouTube. Ah, okay. Sekejap, eh. Um, I'm stop share first. I'm not sure why. Uh, share. Okay. 
All right. Okay. Is it okay now? Nampak dah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the the roles of the bats as uh, pollinator agents and also seed dispersal agent. Eh? Uh, most of the tropical forest trees, they need bats to disperse the seeds. Eh? And then uh, also in mangrove area. So bats is very, very important as a seed dispersal agent. Okay. Uh, have you heard about bat species or we call it guano? Uh, guano ataupun najis kelawa ni eh, guano, we call it guano. Uh, guano, we also uh, known as a black gold. Okay, kalau yang biasa tu uh, gold lah eh, but then this one is a black gold because uh, this guano is actually a very effective uh, fertilizer because it contains uh, of nitrogen, uh, phosphate and potassium that's very very good for uh, the uh, growth of plants. Eh? So guano as a fertilizer. Um, there are also uh, things that we need to understand. Eh? Bats as other wild animals, they also facing um, a kind of extinction in, in habitat because um, of the habitat loss, because of the destruction of their roosting site, eh? um, uh, because of the decreasing food res resources, loss of genetic diversity, and they also can get sick eh? because of the disease. Eh? And also some people, some local um, Malaysian people, like in Sarawak, they also hunt bats and kill bats as food. So Chinese also believe that um, bats have a kind of medicinal value. So uh, that's that is still happening right now. Actually, uh, then the population of bats still um, certain certain bat species. The population is now decreasing. So. Uh, now, actually, the action is on our shoulders, eh? the human being. We have to protect the habitats to make sure that the diversity of the bats is maintained in the ecosystem. So, okay, wait. So, next one. Okay, there are around, there are 133 species of bats in Malaysia and a total of 110 bat species that have been recorded in Peninsula Malaysia. So um, in Peninsula Malaysia, under Wildlife Conservation Act, there are two species of bats listed as protected animals, eh? yaitu uh, Pteropus uh, hypomelanus and also the Pteropus vampirus. And in Sabah, uh, there are three species listed as protected animals under Wildlife Conservation Enactment 1997. And in Sarawak, all that species are protected, yeah, under Wildlife Protection Ordinance 19, 19, 1998. Uh, so, um, bats and roost, and they are roost actually, they are very close together uh, because roost site is um, uh, give crucial um, uh, role to the bats in terms of uh, they stay in the roost, they, uh, they mate, okay, they reproduce. So they need this type of roots eh, to ensure the survival and also the successfulness of the reproduction. So as I mentioned before that these bats eh, have their own character, they are also um, nocturnal animals, means that they active at night. So during daytime, they need this kind of roots to stay in. So uh, they use a variety of structure like this, bats under the palm front, okay? And also sometimes they use caves or rock crevices or old building as the roosting site. So generally, uh, insectivorous bats, they love to roost in trees, uh, cave, as I mentioned. 
uh, and the location is near to the water source. Eh? Okay, next slide. Um, so, uh, bats actually are very sensitive to the urbanization process, and they also uh, as a useful bio indicator for our habitat quality. And um, many studies actually have been done on roost selection of bats in an urban areas by the synanthropic bats. But, uh, synanthropic bats means that bats which can live together with humans, eh, they can adapt well in this urban um, environment. Uh, but the, the problem right now is in temperate regions, this type of study is have been done quite um, numbers eh, compared to tropical regions. So I hope that um, more uh, research on bats or root selection in urban area could be carried out in the future. So in UPM also, there is no study uh, have been conducted related to bats and there is no data that can be referred to. So thus, uh, this study actually is very important um, for, uh, for the uh, research purpose and also for the bats uh, or habitat management for the bats in the campus. So we hope that after uh, we got all the complete results, then the result we can share uh, with the campus management uh, in terms of managing and conserving the habitats of the bats in the campus area. And also we hope that we can increase the numbers of bats uh, diversity in our uh, UPM campus area. Okay, uh, the objective of this study is actually to determine the bat species and also the distribution of the bat species in UPM and also to investigate the root selection by bats uh, which using man-made structure and ornamental trees in UPM Serdang Campus Selangor. So this is, uh, you can see here, this is the Scotophilus curry roosting trees in front of the um, our uh, Pusat Asasi Sain Pertanian. Eh? Okay, the study area conducted in UPM itself. And for your information, uh, UPM consists of uh, 1,245 hectares were covered approximately 46% of forest and trees, which you can see here, it uh, still in green um, color. Eh? If you uh, go Google it, Google map it, and then you can see this is the location of the UPM. Temenina, so, fifth, yes? Um, slide masih lagi dekat introduction. Oh, you ke? Why eh? Um, sekejap ya, sekejap. Okay. I'm stop first. I'm not sure why. Uh, wait. Okay. Now I'm try to share first. Share again. Um. Okay. Is it okay? Okay, now it's in a methodology. Okay, please inform me, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Ani, if uh, the, the slide is not okay or you cannot, uh, you all cannot uh, hear the sound, eh? Okay, uh, then another 3% are the infrastructure area. This is in our UPM campus, yeah? Okay, so how actually we detect the roosting site of the bats? So we, first of all, um, we observe, we do the direct observation eh, uh, of the bats roosting by uh, detect the sign, which is like this. This is the sign of fresh and unfresh guano, okay? And also, this is the, uh, can I use the lens? Okay, this is the urine stain, urine stain eh, of the bats. So based from this um, observation or design, then we know actually that particular area have been visited by bats or uh, sometimes when we detect on the floor, then we look at up at the building, there's uh, bats eh, uh, 
at a certain particular area of the bags. Okay, so the survey was uh, were conducted during the day. Uh, we survey inside and outside the buildings eh? and also the trees. Uh, we also uh, survey it during the daytime. And then all the possible roosting sites were coordinated using the GPS. Okay, next. Uh, so now, uh, this is all the equipment that we use to uh, measure the microclimate condition. Uh, we took the measurement of uh, the illumination, uh, minimum and maximum temperatures, eh? and also uh, we got the um, data from the nearest weather station. Okay, and then this is the data logger, which we put it inside the front of the palm trees to get exactly the data of the microclimate roosting site. Okay, next. Um, okay, these are all the parameters of the uh, buildings that we that um, have been measured. Okay, uh, including the building age. Uh, height from base to the peak, and etc. Okay, next. Uh, these are all the three uh, bats roosting tree attributes. We took the three height measurements, eh? three condition, and also the foliage cover. Okay, uh, in sampling of the bats, we use mist net. This is the mist net, if you can see here. Misnet ni macam jaring kabut lah untuk tangkap uh, birds. Eh? So the misnets and also a modified hand net. Um, this hand net is actually short, eh? but we have to attach it to another alu aluminium pole and then we can erect it to catch the bats that located at high places. Okay. Um, this is the figure where the bats actually inside the net. Okay, next. Um, okay, this is the best part where um, we discuss how actually we want to capture the bats that uh, occupying here. This is the palm, uh, the palm tree. The bats is actually inside this particular uh, area. It is not roosting under the leaves, the, the very green leaf, but it's actually, they are all inside here. Okay, the bats is inside here. So we have to use um, mist net and pole. And then we have to set up like this. Eh? Uh, and then the pole is erected uh, with the mist net erected until the part of the uh, bats location, uh, bats roosting site location. And then, um, uh, the net will open from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. the next morning. So this is uh, the new method that we developed to capture bats at higher uh, trees, eh? roosting trees. So let's uh, see a little bit uh, about how actually um, the process of capturing the bats. Eh? So this one, uh, uh, for bats identification, actually we do the uh, we we take the parameters uh, such as gender, like this one, male and female, uh, because bats are mammals, so uh, it's very easy to identify whether it is male or female. Here you can see uh, this is the testes, eh? testes, and then. Um, this is the male bats, and then this is the female bats, which uh, in the status of pregnancy, yeah? so it have a large stomach here, okay? All right, so we also estimate the age of the bats, uh, whether it is a, an adult bats or juvenile bats, by um, seeing the fusion of the joint, okay, like this one, this is an adult bat showing that the joints is already looks like a, a knob, eh? very clearly no gap between the joint. Okay. And then um, some of the bats, we have to check 
the teeth uh, structure eh? because uh, some of the bats look similar, but it is not the same species. So all the uh, measurements were taken and then were referred to books such as um, Bats of Crows and also Field Guide to the Mammals of Southeast Asia. Okay, next. Ah, that one can now is actually video. You can hear this. Yes. Can not. Boleh doktor. Nampak pula ini. Dapat eh, dapat, dapat eh. Dapat. Ah. Okay. That is actually the sound of Sinopsis brachiotis, the one of the species, fruit bat species. So it's it's sound like the baby crying, right? like that uh, so that is okay for the bats eh? uh, because it's quite tense during the uh, during the release activity eh? so you when I when we want to release the bats sometimes it produces that kind of sound because they feel like uh, a little bit tense and um, uh, stress eh? but uh, with skills and practice, uh, so we minimize the um, uh, duration in releasing the, the bats from the nets. Eh? Oh, mm -mm -mm. So, jump eh. Um. Okay, now. Um, this slide showing the reproductive status of adult bats. So after we identify the gender of the uh, bats, eh, we also check the reproductive status. So for the male bats, there are five reproductive status as mentioned here. And also for the female reproductive status, there are four status. So um, I will um, explain it more. Uh, in my slide uh, after this. Eh? Okay, next. So these are the findings. First of all, I would like to inform you that our UPM, we recorded 12 bat species. Alhamdulillah, eh? 12 bat species under three families where you can see here, these are all the names of the species. And then if we are referring to the conservation status of the bats under IUCN red list, one of the bat species, the Hipsugo macrotis, um, which is actually the quite rare uh, species, um, not easily you can find it. Eh? So we are very lucky, UPM. You are very, we are very lucky because we have these species in our campus. Yeah. So this is DD means that data deficient. Uh, so this uh, species, actually we found quite several places eh, in buildings and also the uh, trees, roosting trees in nearby the campus area. So under the uh, red list of mammals for Peninsula Malaysia, there's also uh, recorded the uh, data deficient um, conservation status for two species here and then near threatened for the species here and also the rest of the conservation status for all the bats that recorded in UPM. Uh, but under the uh, Wildlife Conservation Act, uh, actually all the bats is not protected. Eh? It's not protected. So this is how uh, we check the conservation status. Uh, we are not um, referring to only one, but we have to refer to all the um, um, act eh, that related to Peninsula Malaysia. Okay. Okay, next. So now uh, we get to know uh, uh, species by species of the bats. So under Imbalu Nuride, there are Sacolimus Sacolimus, uh, Tapazuus Longimanus, and Tapazuus Melanopogon. Okay, this. Uh, uh, a very acute bats. Eh? If you see here, this is actually bats that have porch um, under uh, the, the neck area. Eh? 
neck area. So, okay, next. This is the fruit bats. You can easily uh, detect it with the very large eyes, okay, large eyes and quite long snout. So, under Pteropodidae, the Sinopterus brachiotis, Sinopterus hosfieldi, uh, and also the Ionic tree spilia. So, uh, friends, uh, all the viewers, this is the bats that very important in pollinating the durian <coughs> flowers. Eh, ataupun kapok, kapok to um, uh, kapok trees eh? and also uh, petai, eh? petai. So next, uh, other species under Theropodidae, the Rosettus amplicaudatus and also Rosettus uh, lichenalti. So if you can see here, the, the faces look similar, very similar. That's why I've told you that we have to check the T structure. Eh? It only can be identified, similar or not, the same species by the uh, T structure. Okay, next. Okay, now uh, these are under Vespertilionidae, the insectivorous bats. This is quite small. And this is the, uh, the macrotis, Hipsugo macrotis, that uh, very special species that we detect in our UPM campus. Uh, Myotis muricula or the banana bats, eh? Pipistrellus javanicus, and also the Scotophilus coli. Okay. And then um, you can see here, this is actually the general distribution map of bats in our UPM campus. This is the north campus area where uh, you can find here um, the location. This is actually the Asasi, eh? Asasi. We have recorded six species in Asasi uh, area. So congratulations, Asasi. We have a very uh, high number of bats uh, roaming around the buildings or the surrounding of Asasi. Eh? So this is South Campers, uh, the distribution maps of bats eh, that you can see here also. Uh, this is actually the Pertanian area, Faculty Pertanian. Eh? Uh, okay, next uh, slide. Uh, regarding the root site, we have surveyed 54 survey locations where 11% roosting in buildings, 26% in trees, and around 7% uh, roosting in both building and trees. So it means that 50% of the campus area occupied by bats, eh? and then 50 more percent. Uh, bats free. Uh, so this is new information for us. Eh? So we are very glad to know that um, there are bats around the campus area. Eh? Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, data documentation on bats through site that I would like to share with you. So based on this record, you can see that CFSAS, that is the Center of Condition Studies. Our pusat asasi, uh, kita berjaya jadi ranking pertama uh, of the bats uh, diversity uh, and then also roosting site, the highest number compared to the other department of faculties eh, such as uh, faculty science, eh, engineering, forestry, um, uh, modern language. Eh. So, Alhamdulillah, uh, pusat asasi uh, be the first uh, upper, um, location that have the highest roosting site, bats roosting site. Okay, next. Uh, this is the Hipsugo macrotis that we found roosting uh, in Asasi 1 building. So we discovered that these bats is actually love um, to roost at the very rough surface concrete wall. So they are Actually, here eh, there are around twenty individuals, so it's quite quite big numbers eh, in population because they are very small that uh, they can squeeze together at one place. Eh? And then this is how we set up net and uh, we use the hand net to capture the bats. Okay, next this is the area in Asasi Four where you can see the Sinopterus brachiotis clinging. 
um, use the steel sheet eh, as a clinging spot. So this also, sign of trust break your teeth, uh, cling on the ceiling plate. We detect it in the old building in the UPM farm. Okay, now next, again, uh, hip sugo macro teeth that we found in faculty environment. This spot is actually the bats. Eh? Nampak tak titik hitam ni? This is the bats location. Eh? Uh, they love to roost uh, at quite high uh, location in certain area um, in uh, buildings. Okay. And then this also, you can, can you detect that black color there? That is the bats. Eh? Also uh, on the rough surface of concrete wall. Okay, now uh, this one, this is at building uh, Pusat Asasi, Asasi 1. Actually, this is a very, very interesting part because we uh, found this Hipsugo Makrotis behind the board. So let's us uh, view the video that I've prepared. Eh? I hope you can see. Can you see? Okay, right. Betul tak? Dapat tak? I nampak. Dapat eh? Okay, okay. There, you see? That's the bag. All right, then uh, that's actually the bad set. Eh? Wait, uh, I, I close this one first. Stop share. So uh, back to the slide. Okay, back to the slide. And then, um, uh, actually, this is in front of Dr. Yaakob's office. Eh? So I'm very sorry, Dr. Yaakob. Uh, you have to live with the bats always. But actually, this bats is not uh, stay at one place. Eh? Bats of Hipsugo Makrotis, uh, they love to change places. Eh? Sometimes they are here, but sometimes they change to another um, location. So another black uh, blue board, eh? uh, but then I hope that uh, they're still there uh, because Hipsugo macrotis, as I mentioned to you, uh, this is under data deficient species uh, conservation status. So please, we hope that this species um, still there and we can see uh, it increase the population, but not at behind of the board lah kan. Kesian Dr. Yaakob nanti lepas ni eh. Okay, next slide. Okay. Uh, another side is in building. Uh, at Asasi 4 also, we detect one uh, little fella here, Hipsugo Makrotis. Eh? And then, all right, this is nice also. We found um, a group of Pipistrellus javanicus that live in this gazebo. Okay, they are inside here, uh, which actually the roof is made of the clay roof tile. So this is the beds here. And then I also have prepared you a video.
right? Uh, I think nice sound effect too, right? Okay, uh, I continue with my slide. Um, so uh, this is the 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 place which is uh, at College Kedua, eh? Gazebo at College Kedua. Okay, guys. Next, we go to the uh, another site. This is the UPM main hall where actually we have to enter the buildings at the rooftop. Okay. And then we found that there are um, few numbers of bats um, populated in this area. They are uh, cleaning the on the rough surface cement concrete blocks. Uh, then we managed to capture one and identify the species. It is a Tapazos melanopogon. Play you the video. Please concentrate what actually you can see in the video. Eh? Actually, uh, at, the, at this point, wait, uh, okay, this one, if you, if you can really clearly see, something is crawling on the wall, okay? That is the best. Eh? They can crawl so fast on the wall surface. So that is very, uh, um, what I call it, a surprise to us, eh? so fast crawling on the wall okay um back to the slide okay um this is the one site of asasi 4 that we found this myotis muricula which uh, I mentioned to you, this is the banana bats. Eh? So it might be it hanging there because it's not um, uh, yet going back to the roosting site, might be, but we found it in this building area and it clinging on the mineral fiber board or acoustic mineral fiber ceiling tiles. Eh? Okay, next, uh, regarding the roost, uh, the roost sites or rest, the roosting trees, so based on the data recorded, it shows that Department of Biology Faculty Science uh, have the highest numbers of roosting trees, eh? bats roosting trees. So here you can see that the palm trees uh, planted along the road here, all of these trees actually occupied by the bats. Eh? So if you want to hear the bat sound, you can go there at the late evening and then you walk along the road, you can hear the bats sounds eh? before they going out um, to search for food at night. Eh? Okay, next. Uh, so we recorded, there are seven species of trees uh, that uh, bats prefer to roost. Eh? For example, the Borassus uh, Fabellifer, the toddy palm. This is in front of the library. Uh, Levistona rotondofolia, the table palm in front of the faculty of forestry. Equala grandis, eh? uh, Levistona chinensis, Cucos nucifera. This is the normal coconut palm. And also the banana uh, trees, eh? uh, Musa acuminata, and also the wild banana. And then um, First one, the Levistona chinensis, this palm tree that we noticed the Scotophilus coolie inside this uh, palm front. And then uh, another site of um, UPM area, actually we found that other species such as Macrotis, uh, Hipposiderus, uh, sorry, Hipsugo Macrotis also use this Levistona chinensis uh, palm tree as the roosting trees. Eh? 
So I I want you to see this one. All right, nice, huh? <laughs> uh, but then we try so many times actually to get the best video. Okay, stop share first. Uh, I share again my slide. What is happening? Okay, all right. Now we go to the banana tree bats. Huh? Uh, this one, the Myotis muricula that I've mentioned to you, uh, this uh, species is actually we found living in the banana leaves eh? in the banana leaf so this uh, figure shows that the uh, very young leaves of banana then the bats is actually inside the uh, young shoot of banana eh? and then uh, please uh, I have to show you also the YouTube Cannot see this one, eh? Tak nampak? Okay, okay, tak apa. Stop share again. Alright. Mana dia? Tak ada dia. Oh, tu. Ha, tak apa. Uh, okay, so can you feel the excitement of us uh, when we, okay, kejap ya, yeah. uh, when we found the bats, eh? uh, it's very exciting. Okay, next. Um, this is um, location at Asasi 4, nearby Asasi 4, the Liquala Grandis, uh, occupied by Sinopterus brachiotis. You can see here, this is the, the individual one solitary uh, Sinopterus brachiotis. It used the uh, palm from uh, as a tent, eh? uh, as a shelter. Uh, sometimes they use for a long time, but sometimes they keep changing to another uh, leaves or place. Eh? Uh, uh, this is um, uh, the the palm tree is not too high actually. Uh, it's 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 it can uh, easily to um, upper uh, disturbs by the people that use this area actually. But then the bats is ignored. Eh? Okay, next. Next, this one showing the Sinopterus brachiotis. Um, uh, in uh, uh, clinging on the coconut nocifera or coconut tree leaves. Eh? So there you can see they are in cluster. Very up, very high uh, coconut tree actually. Eh? Okay. Mm. Back to this one. Uh, all right, this is another tree that uh, occupied by uh, bats. Eh? Um, for your information, bats uh, that we found um, in UPM campus area, 
they are not only one species in one tree. So sometimes uh, some uh, roosting trees occupied by two species. For example, here, the Levistona chinensis occupied um, or inhabited by two species, Sinoctrus brachiotis and Scotophilus cooli. So there are two species in one palm tree. Eh? Okay, a brief um, sharing uh, on reproductive status and stages. So here, uh, referring to the Hypsugo macrotis, so you can see that this is the female under category three post lactating, uh, where you can uh, find actually here you can see uh, the the nipple is in dark color, and then male under category two. Uh, this is the testis at or near maximum enlargement. Okay, and then there is no epidermis sign, uh, no epidermis distended sign. Okay, next. Uh, Myotis muricula, this is female in active state, uh, stage, and then male uh, under status minor testis enlargement, this is the testis, eh? and no epididymal distended. Um, Sinopterus brachiotis, uh, you can see here, because we managed to get uh, large samples so we can um, give uh, pictures of several stages stage one stage two and then this is the same stage you can see a very large testis eh? testis is sangat besar, bengkak, macam ni. and then the stage four okay this one kalau kita lihat you can see the testis is quite large eh? and then this is the actually the epididymal uh, ni dia yang kita kata epididymal, distended. Eh? Uh, this is, uh, sorry, uh, this one. Eh? Uh, test is not regressed, so caudal epididymal distended. So we have to examine the bats and we have to detect the state, the status of the reproduction uh, of the bats, eh? female and male bats together. Okay, for the synoptrous brachiotis females, this is uh, stage one possibility of pregnancy and then this is the status two where you can see the memory gland full of milk nampak tak ni eh full of milk okay and then this is also uh, the stage of uh, status two this is actually the baby nampak tak ni ni baby dia eh? the baby cling on the mother so sometimes um you imagine how the mom carry the bats while they are flying. Ah, berat juga nampak tak ni? Eh? Setengah daripada badan dia. So number three, stage three is post lactating. Uh, you can see here that the duck is nipple and then no sign of milk already in the memory glands. Eh? Okay, for the Scotophilus cooli, uh, this is the male bats showing uh, status one. And then Pipistrellus javanicus also showing the status one okay um for your information uh actually insectivorous bats and frugivorous bats they have their own reproduction um season eh? uh they are not as um apa, synchronized to each other uh for the uh, frugivorous bats sometimes they have a uh, very distinct season mating season and also um, you can detect several stages of the reproduction status during the sampling time. Eh? All right, so for the conclusion, uh, friends, uh, all the viewers here, uh, we already recorded uh, 12 bat species under three families. And then for roosting site, uh, there are seven species of bats found roosting in building or trees in campus. And then they are showing that high number of bats roosting in tree. Okay, and then you see this one. We recorded 12 bat species, but only seven species of bats that we detect roosting um, in building or trees in UPM campus. So it means that some of the bats might be, uh, they take a long journey to come to UPM eh, for feeding. Uh, might be because we, uh, we cannot find the roosting area, so 
uh, five more bat species still um, under discovery. Lah, eh? We do not know where actually the, the roosting site. And then for future recommendation, uh, we hope that this uh, type of study in urban bats, especially uh, study in roosting site, uh, possibility to be carry, uh, carry out again for uh, in the future. Eh? And then uh, hopefully that we can use advanced technology uh, to record more species, uh, especially uh, the very cryptic one or the endangered species might be, we don't know, uh, that have uh, rooming around the UPM campus. Uh, and then um, uh, and then we hope that uh, this data can increase our knowledge uh, and also awareness regarding bat diversity eh, uh, in UPM campus and also uh, in our ecosystem. So these are the references. And I would like to say a very thank you to uh, Isaac W. Eh? Uh, UKM, also my friends, uh, Dr. Juliana, uh, all the students that are helping us during the study period. Eh? Uh, and also, Encik Nasri, thank you so much for your assistance. Um, and then uh, um, we hope that um, this is not the end of the study in UPM. And then... Um, yeah, more related study will be carried out in the future. So uh, with that, uh, thank you so much. And uh, Danke is the thank you in German. Eh? Thank you in German. So thank you so much. Terima kasih everyone. So back to Dr. Ani. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Marina. Uh, thank you for this very informative and interesting presentation and sharing. Uh, without your sharing, maybe we don't know that we actually live together with the bats. Uh, our common belief that uh, bats is live in cave, in the thick forest, but actually they are together with us, uh, around us. Okay, and very shocking information that we know uh, this bat actually love to um, live together with us in Asasi. <laughs> maybe <laughs> they know that Dr. Marina uh, do research on that. <laughs> Uh, okay. That's why lah, might be because uh, Dr. Marina is in Asasi, kan? Uh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so because of time constraint, uh, maybe we can accept uh, one question from uh, the audience. Anyone want to ask Dr. Marina? Uh, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, uh, nampaknya ada dua yang nak bertanya. Macam mana berebut nak tanya soalan, Cik? Uh, tak apa, tak apa. <laughs> Boleh je. Okay, alright. So, um, it is a very good presentation, Dr. Marina. Thank you uh, thank for you. letting us know about bats. Alright, so uh, I have a question in which like the bats that you um, showed us just now, they are very cute and chomel. However, the bats that I saw in television, <laughs> They looks very fierce and not like uh, the bats you showed uh, just now. So, would you please explain the species of the bats? Ah, okay. Dr. An, Dr. Ain, thank you for the question. Uh, right, but, but then, but then I, I'm not sure actually what species that you refer to. Are the cartoon flying foxes ke, or what? Which one that very fierce too? <laughs> Uh, okay, Dr. Ain, actually, kan, um, there are so many bat species kan, around, uh, around Malaysia and then also around the world. Kan, there are so many bat species, but um, uh, bats, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in some, some views, bats, they nampak macam very fierce, uh, very not, not cute, kan? Uh, Yes, there are some species is not cute. I admit it. Eh? Uh, Mema very fierce. Actually, all the bad species that we handle is fierce. Eh? There are wild animals actually, but uh, the way we handle the bats, eh, the way we handle the bats carefully and gently, 
uh, and then I think um, that is the 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 main thing that um, uh, the picture shows that it's it's very nice to see. Yeah, tak ada nampak garang sangat macam tu kan, Doctor Ain kan? Uh, tapi there are also bats that very fierce. Eh, uh, kami pun sebenarnya dah kena gigit juga jadi semua. Uh, cuma referring to species, um, uh, I'm I cannot give uh, name of the species lah, Doctor Ain, because there are so many species. Might be that one is not in the Malaysian bats court, the Kaluan Negara court, lah, Doctor Ain. Ah uh, betul lah. Yes lah. Tu ialah TV dekat dekat TV kan dekat rancangan do, uh, apa? Dokumentari. Uh, Dokumentari kan. Ha uh, dia uh, show a lot of bats kan. Okay. Thank you Dr. Marina. Okay, thank you Dr. Ai. Thank you so much. Okay. Dr. Marina, uh, bolehkah kita accept another question? Ada a few question from the chat box. Ah, boleh, boleh, boleh. Okay. Uh, first question uh, daripada Dr. Nafiza. Thank you Dr. Marina for the interesting talk. Most people have the stigma that bats are harmful. So we would rather avoid from seeing and meeting any of the bats. How can we tell which species is harmful? Uh, for example, vector that carry the diseases. Okay, nice. Uh, Dr. Nafiza, thank you so much for the question. Okay, frankly, yeah, uh, frankly, frankly speaking, lah, kan, bats, eh, bats, they can transmit uh, diseases. Eh? Um, they also have a kind of ectoparasites that can also um, transmit disease from bats to another animals. Then, um, uh, but actually, uh, when we referring to how can we tell which species is harmful? Um, if we disturb the bats, eh, I think they can cause harmful to and to human being and also the ecosystem. Like I think, eh? sebabnya bats actually they don't want to get near to the human being. Tahu dia bukan nak datang tiba-tiba kat kita kan? They are very shy animals. Then uh, usually they are uh, roosting in one side only like that. So as I mentioned to you, bats give so many benefit things to ecosystem. Um, I think um, in terms of that, how about we let the bats uh, peacefully in their uh, natural habitats, can? and then they play their roles and then we get, it, get the benefits from what they uh, uh, have done to the environment, but in terms of harmful species, kalau boleh kita tak disturb dia, dia tak pun ganggu kita kan? Uh, dan yes, again, um, there is uh, the possibility to try to the disease transmit from bats to another animals. We call it zoonosis kan? Penyakit bawaan uh, penyakit manusia yang dibawa oleh haiwan ni. Okay, uh, hopefully that. Um, helping uh, apa, Dr. Fiza to understand about the the bats and also uh, about the role of the bats. Okay ke Dr. Fiza? Dr. Fiza ada ke? Kat dalam ni ada. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Next question uh, Dr. Marina. Uh, from Dr. Nadia Tura Fiza. Uh, she asked to share whether how to uh, measure, identify the bats using the teeth. Ah, uh, ada. Based on yes, we have. We have Dr. Nadia. Uh, later, after this, I can send you by WhatsApp or uh, through WhatsApp because there are so many photos eh, uh, to um, uh, in using the bat structure, uh, the teeth structure of the bats, eh? So sometimes they are, uh, apa? Banyak lah, dia banyak. But then we have to refer to the textbook also lah, the reference books, eh? Uh, to identify each of the species' uh, teeth structures. Okay? Dr. Nadia, boleh, boleh. Nanti saya boleh share in detail. 
Okay, Dr. Marina, next question from Woon Ching Lim regarding hip sugo macrotis. Will Dr. Marina plan to do molecular taxonomy of this species? Since there was such study from Dr. Lim Lee Sim from USM, who reported one small colony in Seremban and have examined the taxonomy based on the DNA. All right, uh, nice to meet you, Bunching. Hi, VC. <laughs> uh, hi, VC. Hi. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question, VC. Actually, uh, if if you want to collaborate with me, please come and join. Uh, we have so many macrotis here. <laughs> and, and then you can do, uh, we can do together uh, to do the molecular molecular study. Eh? Because we still do not know how they adapt actually. How they adapt uh, using the building and also they, they are using the uh, roosting tree style. Uh, so they can adapt in both um, upper roosting site. Okay? Uh, so we see, uh, Hope can see you. In the future. <laughs> and I'm just wondering because I know this is a data deficient species. That's why when they uh, last reported in Saramban, it was actually roosting in, I think, a very old building. So the thing is, uh, because it's data deficient, uh, I believe that the taxonomy is not really, uh, especially when the, in the advancement of the molecular technology, when they use the DNA to examine taxonomy, some it could be interesting to know how it uh, actually be different from the macrotis, sorry, hypsuko macrotis in the other parts of Peninsula Malaysia. <laughs> so I'm yeah. just wondering Dr. Marina will proceed with that. <laughs> <laughs> inshallah, if um inshallah, if you have the opportunity again, uh, uh might be because we do have this species here, again, betul tak? We see again. Uh, this is very, very not not easy to find this species, and then pusat asasi sen pertanian paling banyak species ni. <laughs> okay, uh, we see. Thank you so much, VC. Um, okay, next question. Maybe Dr. Miranda can list the general uh, technology used to detect the bats. Okay, Nadia. Thank you so much, Nadia, for the question. Actually, for uh, technology, yeah used to detect bats, we can use the, uh, the, the we, we can, as I mentioned in my slide, we can use the telemetry. Uh, that one is actually we detect bats after we put the transmitter on the bats. Eh? Another one, we use the echo, the sound of the bats. We detect it by um, detect the frequency of the bats that detect uh, the sound, eh? the 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 uh, sound of the bats that detected showing the frequency. Each bat actually produce a special frequency. So from the bats detector, we can use the uh about the bat the, the the device to detect what actually bat species that roaming above us. Uh, that is the that is the uh, the technology, if we cannot capture the bats, then we can use the, um, the, the device that can detect the sound, the bat species based on the sound. Okay, Nadia? Okay, okay doctor, thank you. All right, welcome. Okay, next question from Puan Chong Leong. Uh, does Sinoteprus, Sinopterus, sign up? Uh, Brachiotis uh, normally live and roost in a group. Okay, for the single individual you found in a palm tree, does it roost alone or several family members can roost in different trees? Okay, hi Dr. Puan. Uh, thank you so much uh, together with me in, in uh, this series session. Uh, so, actually, uh, Sinopterus brachiotis ni normally live in roost, eh? in group. Uh, dia ramai-ramai. So, the, the one that I found alone in one palm tree, sometimes, um, yeah lah, might be, might be that is uh, the um, apa, resting point kot, uh, might be. Maybe uh, during the during 
uh, macam mana saya nak cakap eh uh, during the feeding activity kan some some of them some of them might be not enough time to get back to their roosting plants and roosting trees kan so they have to rest uh, in certain area so might be might be that is the situation happen so usually they are not roost alone eh tak ada dia 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 selalu kita dapat dia ramai-ramai dia banyak sekali um several family members can roost in different trees uh i'm not sure either there are several family members in one roosting trees or they are all in one family members so many of them uh we are still not um we are still not study on uh, the cluster tu eh uh, dr puan saya belum kaji tu lagi dr puan but then we found that uh, one a single tree can occupy by cynopterus brachiotis in very large numbers so might be they are family members might be yeah or might be they are a few family uh, different families in one roosting trees but that uh, the the one i've shown you dr puan that uh, they can share different species in one different trees uh, sorry in one roosting trees uh, so that is very uh, interesting findings lah eh dia 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 nak ada jiran tetangga yang berbeza <laughs> hmm okay dr puan thank you for your question okay this may be the last question uh, from okay. Siti Nur Hidayu Abu Bakar. Uh, Salam Dr. Marina, you have explained the diversity of bats in UPM, also role of bats in our life, but when or at what level we could consider it as pest or harmful to human? Ah, nice. Hi Dr. Ayu. Uh, thank you for joining me and the rest in this session. So this is very good information, uh, very, very good question. Eh? Okay, you imagine like this. Um, if the bats eh, just use your trees, one trees, and then you think that the, the, the population of the bats still okay, lah, eh, not so many that can produce um, a very large sound, ke, kan? orders, not so smelly orders, ke, kan? Ataupun, uh, sometimes it happens in your uh, roof, eh, dekat rumah tu, dekat roof area, there's so many bats populated um, inside your uh, roofs. Okay. And then the feces, the droppings already uh, not uh, controllable. Uh, that one, I think you should have to get the advice from the pehilitan. Okay. Get the advice from the pehilitan how the best way to, um, I, sorry to say, might be to get rid of the bats, eh? and how actually to move the bats away from your housing area. So, uh, for me, if there is only one or two bats, eh? or six or not more than 20, I think it's okay it's not cause any harmful to human or to your family. It's okay. But then, yes, um, after quite long time might be the, the, the numbers of the bats increase. Eh? And then uh, when you see that you are not capable to handle it, so please get an advice. Contact Perhilitan to get help. Eh, Dr. Ayu, I think that is the best way. Thank you so much, Dr. Ayu. But so far, bats play a very good um, role eh, in our environment. So, biarkan saja kat situ lah kalau dia tak mengganggu pun eh. <laughs> okay? Uh, okay, Dr. Marina. So, All right. if you have any questions, so uh, we end the sharing session with Tasbih Kafaro and Suratul As first. But before that, uh, before uh, we, we, we have a 
take photo the session. session. Uh, please, everyone, uh, turn on your camera. Ha. Jom, jom, jom. Marilah kita ambil gambar. Siapa yang ada? Boleh tak? Uh, on your camera. <laughs> tak make up. Tak apa. We see. Okay. Uh, siapa yang ada? Jom kita ambil gambar uh, okay, for my lagi, record. Ada 21 orang masih lagi uh, online. Okay tak? Ah. <laughs> tak boleh on. Tak apa. Eh Marwan, my son. <laughs> Marwan, kita jumpa kat sini. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, jom, jom. Uh, bolehlah. Siapa okay. yang ada? So, okay. Kita takat gambar dulu yang first page. Kalau ni. Okay. Satu, dua, tiga. 